the day we're taking a look at these matches, which are happening on Saturday, June 18, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Cincinnati Reds vs Milwaukee Brewers. Our team pick is. Milwaukee Brewers for the win. And here is why, the Brewers will have Jason Alexander make his fourth start of the season. Alexander evaded danger in his latest effort, limiting the Nationals to only one run on seven hits in 4.2 innings, and was able to finish with a no decision in the game the Brewers won. The rookie right-hander has been stellar in his first career big league action, allowing a total of only five runs, four earned, in 16.2 innings, leading to a sharp 2.16 ERA and a 1.74 whip. This marks his first career meeting against the Reds. The Brew crew are in the late stages of a difficult 10-game road trip. First, they lost two of three to the Nationals and dropped another three-game series, this time against the Mets. They recently had an eight-game losing streak, and the Cardinals have catapulted past them atop the division. Graham Ashcraft got called up the latter half of May, and he's been killing it for the Reds so far. The right-hander has made five starts for Cincinnati and enters with a 3-0 record to go along with a 2.22 ERA and 1.02 whip. However, he's coming off of his worst outing of the season, where he allowed four earned runs over 4.2 innings against the Cardinals. Since he still won the game and improved to 5-0 in Ashcraft starts this year. Cincinnati's offense has struggled this season, and that's no surprise considering they disposed of three of their best hitters in Nick Castellanos, Eugenio Suarez, and Jesse Winker prior to the season. The Reds enter tonight's game ranked 19th in team batting average, .239, and their 21st in ops, .688. Brandon Drury has supplied the power for Cincinnati this season, mashing a team leading 13 home runs. He has driven in 34 RBIs, and he's hitting .270 on the year. Kyle Farmer leads the team with 37 RBIs, and he's batting .283. The Brewers have Jason Alexander on the mound and he has been great. The rookie has limited his opponents to a total of 5 runs, 4 earned, and 16.2 innings pitched on the season. Red starter Graham Ashcraft just surrendered four runs in 4.2 innings against the Cardinals last time out. Furthermore, the Brewers have fared well against the Reds this season. They stand at 5-2 against the rivals this season, including a 5-4 win on Friday. The Brew crew are having no issues generating offense, scoring at least five runs in all seven of those meetings. Our total pick is under 9.5 runs, and here is why. The Milwaukee Brewers will try to find some consistency after alternating wins and losses in each of their last six games, after a 5-4 win over the Reds on Friday. Rowdy Tellez has 10 home runs and 38 RBIs, while Hunter Renfro has 11 homers as well, and Willie Adames has a team-high 12 home runs. Renfro has a .251 batting average, and Adames has 31 RBIs. Christian Yelich also has 57 hits with 9 doubles and 23 RBIs this season. Jason Alexander will start here and is 0-0 with a 2.16 ERA and 6 strikeouts this season. I get the case to be made either way here, but I'm looking firmly at the under in this one. Jason Alexander's been pretty good and has a 3-0 mark to the under in his appearances this season, while Graham Ashcraft's been really good and has done his best work at home this season. Give me the under in a bit of a pitcher's duel here. Houston Astros vs Chicago White Sox. Our team pick is. Houston Astros for the win. And here is why. The White Sox have endured a number of injuries this year, but have kept themselves afloat and within striking range of first place Minnesota, as the season nears the midway point. After stumbling over the weekend and losing two of three to the Rangers, and rumors of manager Tony La Russa's imminent departure grew stronger, the White Sox bounced back with a sweep of the Tigers. The White Sox outscored the Tigers 27-6 in the three-game set that saw the return of starting pitcher Lance Lynn from a knee injury that has kept him out all season. Lynn gave up 10 hits in just 4.1 innings, but his return should bolster a starting rotation that recently lost Michael Kopich to injury. On Friday night, the White Sox could not slow down the powerful Houston offense, thanks to a 10-run sixth inning. Starter Lucas Yolito came unglued in the sixth inning, and the White Sox never recovered. 
The Houston Astros seem to be the same as they ever were. The Astros are once again in first place in the Al West division, and starting pitcher Justin Verlander once again looks like a Cy Young candidate. As for the Astros lineup, Yander Alvarez is putting up MVP numbers thus far this season, and RF Kyle Tucker is taking his place as one of the team's true power bats. After dropping the first game of their series to the Texas Rangers, the Astro came from behind to win Game 2, and then finished off the series win on Wednesday with a 9-2 victory. Starter Luis Garcia went six innings and allowed just two runs, and struck out nine in the win. Alvarez doubled in two runs in a six-run first inning, that put the game away early. On Friday night in the series opener with Chicago, the Astros exploded for 10 runs in the sixth inning, thanks to a three-home run outburst, including a grand slam by Michael Brantley, and rolled to their third straight win. I'm going to stay with Houston in this one, but the line is probably too thick to mess with. Verlander is rolling in his last pair of starts, posting just one earned on nine hits and three walks in 14.0 innings during that stretch. As for Cueto, he's been okay but not spectacular in his last trio with 17.0 innings, nine earned, 17 hits and two walks. I like Cueto to put up a quality start here, but I'm still leaning Astros win-wise. Our total pick is over the total and here is why. Justin Verlander has once again tapped into the fountain of youth during his 16th year. The 39-year-old right-hander has not skipped a beat this season in his return to the Astros' starting rotation, allowing three earned runs or fewer in 10 of his 11 outings. He will carry an electric 1.94 ERA, 0.81 whip, and 78-15 KBB ratio across 78 and two-thirds innings, 12 starts, into this home outing against the Sox. Houston has been elite from the box this year and will give him plenty of run support in this game. Further, they have owned the White Sox at Minute Maid Park, winning six straight. Chicago is playing much better after a very sluggish start to the month of June, but they will be overmatched against Verlander in this one. Detroit Tigers vs Texas Rangers. Our team pick is Rangers for the win. And here is why. The Texas Rangers come into this series perhaps ahead of schedule as they try to build themselves back up to a playoff contender. Despite a record that is below .500, the Rangers find themselves ahead of teams like the Angels and Mariners, who both came into 2022 with higher expectations. On Thursday night, one of the Rangers' prominent youngsters came through to deliver a victory. 23-year-old third baseman Ezequiel Duran smacked a bases clearing three-run triple in the ninth inning to give the Rangers a come-from-behind 3-1 win. Starter Martin Perez kept his steam in the game by going seven strong innings and giving up eight hits and just one run. On Friday night, Rangers' John Gray pitched seven shutout innings, allowing just five hits and striking out six. On offense, the Rangers pounded out 12 hits, and catcher Jonah Heim went 2-4-4 with a home run and three RBI in a 7-0 Rangers win. When the stats guys are researching teams back to World War II to find anemic offenses to compare to your current output, things cannot be going well. The Detroit Tigers are threatening the record books for offensive futility thus far this season, and that futility continued on Thursday night against the Rangers. Detroit managed eight hits but scored just once in a 3-1 loss to the Rangers. The Tigers left eight men on base and lowered their league-worst runs per game total to just 2.68 per game. They wasted an outstanding performance by starter Bo Brisk who went seven innings and didn't allow a run while striking out six. On Friday the Tigers' offense once again came up empty in a 7-0 shutout loss to the Rangers. Detroit managed just five hits and only one extra base hit, a double by Willie Castro. Detroit is now 24-39 on the season. The Tigers may finally have a chance to put up some offensive numbers on Saturday. The Tigers are hitting a respectable .251 against left-handed pitching this season, and Hearn has hit a lot of barrels this season. The Tigers should produce some hard hit balls, and this could allow for breakout games for the likes of Miguel Cabrera and even struggling shortstop J.B. Baez. Unfortunately for Detroit, they are sending out a stop-app starter against a more potent lineup in the Texas Rangers. Look for the Rangers to produce a solid run total against Garcia, as he makes just his fifth start of the season. Basically a two-pitch pitcher, Garcia does not have the kind of plus stuff to keep the Rangers' power bats from having a solid day. Our total pick is over 8.5 runs, and here is why. The Texas Rangers have scored 12 runs in their last three games and four or more runs in five of their last ten games. The Rangers have won five straight games when scoring four or more runs. Nathaniel Lowe leads the Rangers with 61 hits and 25 RBI, while Adelis Garcia and Marcus Emien have combined for 117 hits and 68 RBI. Taylor Hearn gets the ball, and he is 4-4 with a 5.37 ERA and 50 strikeouts this season. Hearn is 0-0 with a 1.93 ERA and 4 strikeouts in his career against the Tigers. The Detroit Tigers have scored one run in their last three games and three or fewer runs in eight of their last nine games. 
the Tigers have lost five straight games when scoring three or fewer runs. Miguel Cabrera leads the Tigers with 58 hits and 21 RBI, while Jonathan Shoup and Harold Castro have combined for 85 hits and 34 RBI. Rony Garcia gets the ball, and he is 0-2 with a 5.06 ERA and 36 strikeouts this season. This will be Garcia's first career game against the Rangers. The Detroit Tigers can't put together a fence to save their life, but we have two pitchers who have ERAs over 5 on the season. Taylor Hearn has a 6.52 ERA and .284 allowed batting average on the road through 19.1 innings. Rony Garcia has allowed six runs in his last nine innings, and he has a 5.75 ERA at home through 20.1 innings. If these teams can't put some runs on the board, something is wrong. Give me the over. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.